Welcome, this is Zan Ta with Repo Products. Today's video is on what's new in Revit 2021 PowerPoint presentation. In the coming weeks, I will be creating individual videos for majority of the new enhancements in Revit 2021 since there are so many. With that, let's begin. With the new features and enhancements in Revit 2021, we will break it up into the platform-based enhancements versus the discipline-specific based enhancements, architecture, structure, and MEP. For the platform-based enhancements, the PDF and image linking and inserting has been enhanced now. In 2020, you could link in a PDF file and images but they were a little difficult to manage in the sense of seeing everything and sorting them and relinking them and so on. Now you can link the PDF files and the images from either the local or cloud location, seeing the saved path. You can select multiple rows to reload or remove the links. You even have the ability to convert the links to imports so they become part of the file. And then they also added the show button so you can actually click a PDF or image and click show and it will automatically jump to that specific view so you can see it better. You now have the ability to host your cloud model in Europe and this is going to be based upon the BIM 360 account that you have and for example you may be a company that has multiple locations in Europe and the US. So in that case, your account will give you the ability to see and specify which data host location you want, either US or Europe. They also have improved the home page of Revit, which is good. Now you can actually see things a little bit better and sort it better and being able to differentiate between recent files versus cloud hosted models. You can also see a longer list of projects if you have to constantly jump from one project to another. And then you also have the ability to see your BIM 360 models with the BIM 360 button icon as compared to just saying recent files. Revit 2021 now introduces workspaces, which is a very nice feature to have. So when you start up the software, they'll take you through a little wizard and you can specify what disciplines you work with the most and which tools will eventually be shown based upon your discipline. You can always adjust the interface by going to the options of the software as well. And so you don't always have to stick with the new Revit workspace that you built. Now Revit 2021 allows you to not only stripe the rows in your schedules, but also change the coloring too. The original 2020 Revit striping was just gray. Now you can change it to different colors and it makes it a little easier to see. And then as you can see, you can specify under the appearance tab of the schedule properties for the striping and the coloring as well. They have introduced a new category called infrastructure. So if you go to your visibility graphics dialog box and look at your filter list, you now have infrastructure and it'll help you with sorting out your data and working with your 3D model data, for example, bridges and things like that. For those of you who are working with Dynamo, the latest version of Dynamo 2.5 is installed by default as well when you work with Revit 2021. They have also introduced a few requested nodes for Dynamo. And so when you are working with Dynamo inside Revit 2021, you will see them and you can use them. Now, this is an interesting one. They have created a column called Enable Filter within the Visibility Graphics dialog box. And this allows you to not only enable or disable the filter, it allows you to keep the filter within that view. So that way you don't actually have to delete the filter if you don't need to. For those of you who are very particular about their tags, 
you now have the ability to rotate the tags with your component and all you have to do is select it and go into the properties and you'll see it says rotate with component so as long as that's checked it will rotate maintain association with your component they have also introduced the ability to take your voids to cut the geometry and not have to deal with making two separate types of families to try to achieve this so an example might be a drip edge family that has a yes no parameter to turn on or off so you can see it and with a drip edge you might have a void underneath that cuts the geometry where that drip edge is going into the family. There are other types of additions and improvements, the little tweaks here and there. For example, consistent line style naming. So all of the hard-coded Revit line styles are now in brackets and they're at the bottom of the list. So any customized line styles that you have created are at the top and they are still numerical and alphabetical orientation. They have a button for Get Autodesk Content so that you can jump straight to Autodesk's site to get more content. They have improved the accuracy of shadows and sun settings as well have been updated. Now when we take a look at the 2021 enhancements from just an architectural standpoint, you have the ability to work with generative design now. Those of you who are using this kind of workflow in their projects, you can use it to generate different schemes for a particular model. And it will help you figure out what's the most optimal design based upon your criteria. You can filter and rank the results. You can look at all the different outcomes. You can look at the goals that you're trying to achieve and the conditions you're trying to set. They do have some sample studies in the Revit 21 software for you to explore if you need to. They have enhanced the software to allow for much better quality and usage of the visual style called realistic. And so now they've enhanced it so it makes it much faster, easier to work with and something actually worth using for those of you who have to get into rendering and actual material and playing with it very carefully. They've also updated the library of materials so that it is more accurate and the light, how it reflects on the material is more accurate. They have now introduced its slanted walls. So if you have to work on a project where you have to draw a wall that is slanted, you can do so now. And prior to this, you would have to create a mass object and use wall by face to place it. Now you can actually create a slanted or tilted wall and you can adjust it during the creation of it or after the creation of it and get into cross section and angle from vertical parameters. For those of you who are working with Inventor and you need to take your Revit 3D model content into Inventor, they have enhanced that linking functionality as well. So that way, if you are working in the Revit model, the Inventor users can receive any notification if the Revit model has been updated. Any Inventor components and dependencies are also updated in your Inventor software. Now, when we take a look at the 2021 Revit enhancements for a structural discipline, we can see that they have created new standard 3D rebar shapes and you can enable shape codes. You can extract the bending instructions and get into fabrication instructions as well. For those who are working with couplers, they have the ability now to set up better, higher fidelity of the rebar modeling for fabrication. In other words, making sure that when you put in the couplers and you look at them, they are a lot more accurate and more representational of what you are trying to design. And they've enhanced the uh, rebar so that it can work on more circular structures easily. You can also specify in 2021 now the treatment of the ends of the rebars, either with or without couplers. They have taken the ability of the fabric sheets to adjust the visual setting 
So now you can actually specify it to be solid, unobscured in 3D views as well. You can also now override the hook lengths by instance. So if you're working on a situation where you have a rebar and you have to move or adjust the individual lengths of a series of them, you can do so via the override hook lengths parameter. For those of you who are working with precast, um, they have integrated precast automation now. And uh, it is localized to the specific Revit languages. It has Imperial units available. Um, they have simplified the deployment and any model overriding controls for precast assemblies are enabled as well. For those of you who are working in Dynamo, they actually have integrated steel connection automation nodes. And so you can use the nodes and the scripts in there and be able to see thumbnails of the pictures of the nodes as well. And so again, they also have some sample scripts for you to play with. They have integrated structural analysis results exploration within Revit 2021 now too. So if you're doing structural analysis, you can take a look at the results a little bit better and very similar to looking at the results through robot structural analysis. If you have to modify and manipulate a steel member, you can do so now with editing tools where you can actually retrace the profile of the edges and you can edit the boundaries and start to make some interesting designs for your specific member. If you need to work with your structural connection settings and working with that aspect of the software, you can create the stiffeners on the beams and the columns as well now. You can also create your steel elements in a vertical view, like an elevation or a section. So for example, if you're trying to draw a gusset plate for this example here in the image, you can do so directly in that 2D view. You can also do it in 3D as well. For dimensioning purposes, you can now dimension to steel plates and it snaps to the center line in a front view and it snaps to the midpoint in a side view. So it makes it a little easier to document that. Lastly, from the MEP perspective of the 2021 enhancements, you now have the ability to have electrical circuit naming. Um, they are en enabled in the electrical settings uh, dialog box. You have circuit identifiers in the panel schedules. So when you're creating a schedule, you can see what circuit it, it's tied to. Same as wire and device tags. And then for those who are um, in France and UK, they have templates preloaded as well. They have also added single phase LN panel boards as well. And the panel schedules now hide columns for any unused phases. The distribution systems and panels are checked for compatibility and will give you a warning. The switchboard circuit quantity, the number of rows in the panel schedules for switchboards are now set up to show the quantity of circuits, not the number of connected poles. They added the switch phases control to set up phases of one and two pole loads. And parameters of spares and spaces can be modified. For example, poles and frame sizes. The panel schedules now appear under the sheet list under properties. Panel schedules are also searchable in the project browser. And circuit and panel properties may be modified in the properties palette. The MEP work sharing enhancements have been updated. So when you select a specific, say, duct section to request borrowing rights to use it, as you can see in the image, the upper image shows the object that's being borrowed. The middle image shows the behavior of what used to happen prior to the updated change. In other words, when you requested the borrowing of it, it would borrow the whole entire section. And then you would make changes and hit save and it would update the whole section. Now, the last image on the bottom shows the new behavior. It will only take and let you borrow just what you want. You don't actually have to grab the entire series. For those who are doing PNID, you have PNID Modeler on BIM 360 Docs, and 
it replaces the previously available functionality on BIM 360 team. PNID diagrams are available in Revit and progression is color coded to ensure current usage and positioning. The new pipe flow units have been added as well, cubic feet per hour, cubic feet per minute, and liters per hour for situations that require that. MEP fabrication extension integration as well. Um, they're now located under the file tab. You can import MEP fabrication jobs on the insert tab and you can export job files on the contextual ribbon. So they've updated locations of some of these functions. And then lastly, this is really more of a, not a Revit 2021, but a Revit 2020.1 enhancement where they have created analytical geometry from the model for systems analysis. You can validate your model and review your analyses. You can create custom analysis workflows and you can use HVC Systems Sketch Tool for spaces. Lastly, they also extended the zone equipment and plant loop types. So those are all the updates and features and enhancements to Autodesk Revit 2021. As you can see, there's a lot. And over the next course of a few weeks, I will go through the process of creating individual videos for majority of the 2021 features and updates. Thank you very much for watching.